I recently made videos about pitchers who earned wins and losses in a game while only throwing one pitch. Achieving a win or loss with only a single pitch is possible due to a set of specific circumstances. For wins, if a relief pitcher comes into the game in the middle of an inning, gets the foul out with one pitch, has his team take the lead in the following half inning, then gets replaced, he'll earn the victory while only throwing a single pitch. For losses, a relief pitcher could allow a walk-off home run on his first pitch thrown or, prior to the three batter minimum rule, come into a game, allow the go-ahead runner to reach base, then gets immediately replaced and the following pitcher allows that go-ahead run to score. In the video about the one-pitch wins, I mentioned the two instances in which a pitcher earned a win without throwing a pitch. Twice did a pitcher finish an inning without throwing a pitch, as in both cases, the foul out was recorded on a pickoff and caught stealing. That raises an interesting question though. We've seen two occurrences of a pitcher getting a win without throwing a single pitch, but what about pitching appearances in general? Certainly, a pitcher can come into the game, record the foul out of an inning without throwing a pitch, then get replaced without earning the win. Just a typical pitching appearance. How often does this happen? Before seeing such events, it's important to look at the rulebook regarding substituting a pitcher. Prior to the three batter minimum rule, the rulebook stated any substitute pitcher must pitch until at least one batter reaches base or is put out, or the offensive team is put out in some other manner. So, a manager can't call on a pitcher from the bullpen, then replace him without anything happening. That pitcher needs to do something, and we want to see the occurrences where that something took zero pitchers to accomplish. As always, when talking about pitch counts, we'll strictly be looking at games in the pitch count tracking era which is 1988 to present day. While it's likely many zero pitch appearances occurred prior to 1988, pitch counts before that year are inaccurate and unreliable. So, how many zero pitch pitching appearances have occurred in the pitch count era? That answer might surprise you, as there's been 25 of them, 24 in the regular season and 1 in the postseason. As you can imagine, if a relief pitcher comes into the game and is able to record an out without throwing a pitch, that out must have been from a pickoff, or pickoff and caught stealing, right? Normally yes, with one new exception. Starting this year, in 2023, it's technically possible a pitcher can record a strikeout without throwing a pitch if the batter suffers three straight clock violations, giving him three strikes without the pitcher needing to do anything. While possible, we've yet to see that, and I would be very surprised if that ever happens. Does this mean all 25 occurrences of a zero pitch appearance ended in a pickoff? Well, no. Most have though, as 23 of the 25 zero pitch appearances were pickoffs. Those appearances would basically go as followed. A pitcher comes into the game, picks off a runner on base to end the inning, then either the game ends or the reliever gets replaced in the following inning. A perfect example of this comes from that low in postseason occurrence. In Game 3 of the 2002 National League Division Series between the Arizona Diamondbacks and St. Louis Cardinals, Cardinals infielder Fernando Vina is on first base with two outs in the bomb of the fourth inning. Arizona starting pitcher Miguel Bautista is taken out of the game and lefty reliever Greg Swindle is brought into the game to face left-handed hitter J.D. Drew. Before throwing a single pitch to Drew, Swindle picks off Vina on first, getting him out in a caught stealing. The inning ends without Swindle throwing to Drew. After the Diamondbacks batted in the top of the fifth, pitcher Rick Helling is brought in from the bullpen to pitch in the bomb of the fifth, giving Greg Swindle the ultra-rare zero-pitch pitching appearance. Prior to 2023, given that a pickoff is the only way a pitcher can record an out without throwing a pitch, that explains why most of these appearances are nearly identical. However, there are those two zero-pitch appearances that did not include a pickoff. In fact, in those two, the pitcher didn't even record a single out. I'll explain how it's possible, but for those curious, those two occurrences are not a Larry Yunt incident. What is the Larry Yunt incident, you might be wondering? Larry Yunt was a pitcher who was part of the 1971 Houston Astros. On September 15th of that year, the Astros were facing the Atlanta Braves in Houston, trailing them by a score of 4-1 entering the top of the ninth. Larry Yunt, in what was his Major League debut, was called in from the bullpen to face Atlanta in the ninth inning. However, while throwing his warm-up pitches on the mound, he injured his arm and was taken out of the game before he got to face a single batter. According to MLB rules, since Yunt was announced into the game by the manager, he technically made an appearance, albeit without throwing a single pitch. He appears in the box score despite not doing a single thing. 
Yeah, would never make it back to the major leagues, and this one game where he had to leave during his warm-up pitches was his only game in the big leagues. Since it counts as an appearance per MLB rules, Larry Young technically played a game in Major League Baseball and joins an exclusive club of pitching appearances without throwing a single pitch. Quick reminder that Young is not part of the list of 25 since that event occurred prior to 1988. So, if the two zero pitch and zero pickoff appearances were not like that of Larry Yunts, then what happened in those two games? I promise we'll get to that soon, but first we need to look at the other 23 games. The 23 zero pitch appearances are more or less the same situation as I covered earlier in the video. Pickoff or pickoff and cause stealing to end the inning. The most recent occurrence happened just two years ago in 2021. In a game between the Houston Astros and Seattle Mariners, there are two outs in the bottom of the eighth and down three runs, Houston relief pitcher Joe Smith gets called in to face outfielder Mitch Hanniger. Before throwing to Hanniger, Smith picks off J.P. Crawford on first base to end the inning. The Astros failed to score in the top of the ninth, and so Joe Smith's final line was a third of an inning pitch without even throwing a pitch. I would go through the other 21 occurrences just like that, but you get the picture by now. We know that there are two zero pitch wins, but did you know there's also a zero pitch save? In April 1989, Chicago Cubs closer Mitch Williams, yes, that Mitch Williams, came into a ball game to record the final out. The Cubs were winning 3-1 over the San Diego Padres, there were runners on first and second, and two outs in the ninth inning. With the tying runs on base, Williams, before throwing a single pitch, picks off the runner on second Carmelo Martinez to end the game. One of the most unconventional saves of all time. That raises another interesting question. We've had zero pitch wins and a zero pitch save. Can there be a zero pitch loss? In fact, there can be. I cover that in my previous video, but here's a quick recap. Suppose it's a tied ball game in the bottom of the 10th inning and there's a new relief pitcher that comes into the game. He attempts to pick off the automatic runner on second, but his throw is wild, allowing the runner to advance to third. Immediately after, the pitcher then commits a balk, forcing in the winning run without throwing a pitch. He would get credited with the loss in perhaps the dumbest way possible. Has something like that ever happened though? Has a game ever ended in a loss during a zero pitch pitching appearance? Yes! That is one of the two mentioned games from before. In a 2005 game between the Washington Nationals and Milwaukee Brewers, the Brewers have runners on the corners with one out in the bottom of the 11th inning. With the game tied and lefty hitter Lyle Overby at bat, left-handed pitcher Mike Stang comes in from the bullpen to face him. Before throwing a single pitch, Stang commits a balk, allowing the runner on third to score the winning run. Other than Larry Yunt, it's probably the quickest pitching appearance of all time, a zero-pitch walk-off balk. The only zero-pitch walk-off in the pitch count era, possibly all of MLB history. That was one of the two non-pickoff appearances. The final zero pitch appearance does not feature a pickoff, balk, or anything like that. It's something I guarantee you wouldn't even think of. The appearance occurred in 2018 in a game between the Cleveland Indians and Oakland Athletics. It's the bottom of the seventh and the Athletics have runners on second and third with two outs. With left-handed hitter Dustin Fowler set to come to the plate, manager Terry Francona brings in lefty reliever Oliver Perez from the bullpen to replace the starting pitcher Trevor Bauer. In turn, the Athletics manager Bob Melvin decides to have right-handed outfielder Mark Hanna pinch hit for Fowler. To counter the pinch hitter, Francona opted to have Canna intentionally walked. It happened so quickly, Canna was on first base as the commercial break ended. Now with the bases loaded, left-handed hitter Matt Joyce is set to come to bat, but Bob Melvin decides to pinch hit again, having right-handed hitter Chad Pinder come to the plate to face Perez. What does Terry Francona do? He subs out Perez for right-handed pitcher Zach McAllister. Oliver Perez came into the game, intentionally walked Mark Hanna without throwing to him, then immediately departed the game after the walk. It's something that was only made possible due to the new rule where intentional walks don't require the pitcher to throw to the batter anymore, active since 2017. Thanks to the also new 3-batter minimum rule that has been in effect since 2020, something like this won't ever happen again. A pitcher coming in to face one batter, not throwing to him, then departing the game. There was only a three year window with the no pitch intentional walk and no batter minimum, and thanks to those circumstances, it gave Perez the weirdest pitching appearance in the history of Major League Baseball. Oliver Perez's appearance will forever be one of a kind, 
come into the game, record no outs, and not lose the game while throwing zero pitches, then depart without injury. Time will tell when the next zero pitch appearance will happen. Maybe we'll get to see another zero pitch walk off balk sometime soon for all we know. Whenever and whatever the appearance is, these events have to be the absolute least amount a pitcher can do in a Major League Baseball game.